to TV Burp. Your Saturday night starts right here. <laughs> Dale Winton doll on when sharks attack. Bring on the wall! <laughs> Man practices the rhythm method of contraception with a specially adapted you-know-what on hobby. That must be a real hit with all the other patients. <laughs> and after punch-out with Danny, Louis Walsh winds up in casualty. <laughs> went out yeah but just because she was voted off she wasn't downhearted no because she's got plans you have been some battler haven't you i have fought with all my heart and with everything i had and this doesn't end here this is the beginning of my dream this is the beginning yeah it's the beginning and dermot was most encouraging well it's all over for ruth <laughs> Say, I did enjoy Eoghan Quigg's performance. As you know, I'm backing Eoghan to win, but I very nearly didn't vote for him last week as he was almost forgetting to do his voting face. You know, that face that he does to make you vote for him. Uh, he has sung High School Musical if you want his vote for A+. The big news last week was Britney Spears. The problem was we had to wait all blooming night. I can't believe I'm about to say it. Everyone's talking about it. Pinch yourselves because it's true. <laughs> Most talked about pop star on the planet going to be here right on this very stage. It's Britney Spears! <laughs> Hooray! And you lucky pops have got a ticket to the hottest show in town. Pinch yourselves because Britney Spears is here! Hooray! Welcome back to The X Factor, the only place to see Miley Cyrus and that sensational X Factor exclusive, Britney Spears! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> the first visit here for five years, we've got the exclusive one and only Britney Spears is here! Get on with it! <laughs> Welcome to the most exciting X Factor result ever, the incredible Britney Spears performs live on this stage. <laughs> Tonight, the excitement is off the scale in just a few short moments. Well, it's going to be mayhem here for the return of Britney Spears. <laughs> she's here, she's live, she's in the flesh. She's a global superstar, and we are thrilled to have her here. It's the one and only Britney Spears. <laughs> yeah, she got the classic X Factor style build up as well, but I think they missed a few bits out of that. Eight number one singles, five platinum albums. She didn't mentor the other acts like on previous weeks. She minds when she sings. Worse dancer than John Sargent, because her pants are too tight. She shaved all her hair off. Taken out of her own home on a stretcher. Like that, if you missed it, mm. which brings us to her occasional item the many faces of Louis Walsh, number five, sad. Adventures for Boys Now, in which Todd Carty and son James were given the opportunity of learning to drive a steam train. I learned so much about the workings of the steam train from this show. <laughs> <laughs> for instance, 
I found out where the whistle comes from. Yeah, it's all in the type of coal. <laughs> yeah, depending on the type of coal. Now, that's a bit of uh, old coal for a steam train. Here's a bit of French coal. Uh, and this is a bit of old uh, British rail coal. We apologise for the delay. This is due to circumstances beyond our control. <laughs> Mr Todd Carty really threw himself into it, though. He even got himself a new look. All right. Yeah. Had enough of the smoke. Shall we leave it? Yeah. Heil Hitler! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He really rediscovered the child within himself, did Todd. James? Yeah? Catch. Why are you me? No, I'm not rising to it. <laughs> I felt that really the two of them should pull their fingers out a bit more. On their mission, they'll need to keep the heat and flames going for one hour and ten minutes. Hold that in the door there and have a look around. Is the firebox clean apart from the coal you put in? Yeah, it looks pretty clean to me. Okay, there's nobody in there asleep on the Nobody asleep, nobody having a kip. <laughs> <laughs> What's what you doing with that? Sorry. Oh, sorry, Harry. Did you know? Every now and then, we on TV Burp spot someone who we think is going to make it big in the tough world of television. Someone who immediately lights up the screen with their charisma. This week, it was the turn of Jesse Wallace's sister, Danielle Mason, on Filthy Rich and Famous. Yes, it's TV Burp, stars of tomorrow, today. TV Burp, stars of tomorrow, today. That has a lot to do with it. Zoo Days, the story of the day-to-day -day running of Chester Zoo, they've got some very talented animals. There was a penguin that did a sheep impression. Penguin numbers are in decline. Uh. <laughs> but the main focus this week was on poor Strolch, the South American spectacled bear who has the same problem as my nan. Yeah, neither of them are keen on taking their tablets. I'm just going to... Um... Take the inside of this pear out, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll put the peanut butter in, mix it in with the tablet. It's just so it's, it's, in a, uh, it's inside something, that, and I can just pass it to him, and hopefully he'll just eat it whole. Yeah, as I say, we do a similar thing for my nan. <laughs> She's only on one tablet a day. She has been since the 70s. What we do, we, uh, we crush up the tablet, and we mix it with peanut butter, and we stick it in a pear, all right? <laughs> then we take the pear, and we stick that in a hollowed-out grapefruit. <laughs> Mm. We then hide the grapefruit inside a cantaloupe melon. <laughs> we put the cantaloupe melon inside... <laughs> inside a watermelon. Mm. Now, it does seem a bit of a palaver. <laughs> but if she didn't take that tablet and got pregnant, I'd never forgive myself. <laughs> mm. yeah. I forgot to tell you, I got a new cat. Yeah, and I love to stroke him and then he rolls over. Oh, it's really sweet. Each mating lasts just seconds. Afterwards, she rolls over. This probably encourages the sperm to reach deep inside the uterus. <laughs> This was Animals in the Womb, which follows the adventures of animals as they grow up to be babies. Parts of this documentary reminded me of another show entirely, Big Brother. It's day 28 of Life in the Womb. <laughs> Unborn kitten, will you come to the daily room? <laughs> there was one last cat fact that I didn't know. <laughs> when they finally open, the kitten's eyes are enormous in relation to their head. It's equivalent to us having eyes the size of tennis balls. Ooh. This is what I'd look like if I was a kitten. Furball. It was cat 
since last week, this week the spotlight was on dogs. And here's an interesting, and I must say, rather frightening fact. Biologically, all dogs can interbreed. However, for some breeds, it's become physically impossible. You've got to be kidding me! I've got a headache! Yeah, I enjoyed this week's dog in the womb, but I have to say, I enjoyed last week's cat in the womb. But which is better? Dog in the womb? Or cat in the womb? There's only one way to find out. <laughs> John Barrowman reveals new pop video on Here Come the Boys. <laughs> Brian and Dougal get too close on the underdog show. Kiss a kiss. <laughs> get a kennel. <laughs> and ghost of Michael Jackson turns up on Most Haunted. The ghost of a large male prisoner lurks here, angry that his incarceration has lasted past his death. He is said to confront any unsuspecting guest with an echoing voice shouting, I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Michael Jackson on Most Haunted, but even more surprising than that was the news that another pint-sized rock star was shacking up with Phil and Susie on Albert Square. Phil, I can't find print. Well, he's, uh, he's probably asleep now. A shoe or something. No, he's not in the house. He must have got out. Oh, gone far, can he? His legs ain't long enough. <laughs> yeah, this small prince. Yeah, he's been staying with Phil and Susie, but there's a rotor in showbiz circles for looking after Prince. It's my turn at the weekends. <laughs> All right, Prince. What? You want to go to the toilet? You want to go to the toilet, is don't you? What are you frightened about, you silly man? <laughs> There's a curly whirly. <laughs> Not now. After you've been to the loo, and you can eat it during X Factor results. <laughs> you got your key, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a pain, but I've got him till Sunday morning, then I have to drop him round Dale Winton's. <laughs> but back to EastEnders, and Phil and Susie are an item. Yeah, that's not to say Phil hasn't strayed. No, he had a bit of the naughty with. Uh... Oh, sorry. I... <laughs> Shirley. Why don't you just give him another chance? I already have. What do you mean? What do you mean, what do I mean? Me and Phil. The other night. You commuted. Well, that's one word for it. I knew it. He still loves you. He couldn't even look at me afterwards. Or before. <laughs> Of course, Shirley turned her back on a trip round Europe with Bobby Davro to stay with her old mate, Heather. So, how did Bobby Davro cope with Shirley's betrayal? Not well. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. Just remember, son, there's nothing worse than what-ifs. I mean, what if I'd listened to your mum more? What if I'd spent more time with you and your brother instead of going down that stupid betting office? What if I hadn't walked out on Haley's mum? And what if... Bobby Davro rocks with laughter hadn't been cancelled. <laughs> As I say, she decided to stay with her old mate, Eva. You know what, Ev? Just the once, I'd like to see me through your eyes. Hmm. What would it be like looking through the eyes of Heather? <laughs> oh, hello, Ev. Uh, it's me, your old mate, Shirley. Oh, wait a minute. What you... Why that... Why, that's Princess Curly Whirly. <laughs> Princess Kelly Whirly. Oh well, he'll have to make do with a penguin. World's strongest man, super series now, and let's have a look at the lineup. Former Europe's strongest man from Poland, Jarek Dimek. Almost as tall as the skyline. Six foot seven inches from Minnesota, Dave Ostland. Not quite as tall as a skyline, is he? He's tall, I'll give you that. He's about as tall as a shed. <laughs> of course.
course, I was pinning my hopes on Mark Felix, one of the British entries who was doing really well with the lifting of heavy things. Let's see it, Mark Felix. Mark made 385 look like a couple of bags of sugar. Yeah, he made 385 look like a couple of bags of sugar. And he's made 395 look like a couple of bags of potatoes. <laughs> 395 like a couple of bags of potatoes. I wonder what he'll make 405 look like. A couple of bags of yams? This would be astonishing if he's able to just regroup here and get it. 395 looks simple. 405 beats him. Oh. <laughs> More entertaining for me was the one where they carry the little midget gravestones up and down, up and down. Most of them will go high low. You can see with Burton in there. So, uh, a little bit of a gamble here from Samuelson as they make the turn. <laughs> yeah, it's good that I might have a go at that myself. Like that, if you missed it. Yeah, I made it look like a couple of bags of radishes. <laughs> <laughs> the fun police now on Channel 4, which followed Britain's much maligned health and safety officers. If you're interested in health and safety, there's plenty of information available in specially produced leaflets. This one is quite specific. Chainsaws at work. <laughs> now, that won't be relevant to every business. That will only be relevant to a very narrow range of businesses on chainsaws. <laughs> Mm. I wish I'd read that leaflet now. I'm going to start paying more attention to health and safety from now on. What other leaflets have you got? This is uh, brand new, uh, off the press this morning. Um, selection and management of mobile elevating work platforms. <laughs> you encounter hazards not just in the workplace. No, it gets even more dangerous once you step outside. I won't be standing under that. I mean, you know, people keep dying like flies from standing under hanging baskets. It's really dangerous <laughs> things for that. Yeah, hanging baskets could fall at any time. Yeah, puts working with a chainsaw in the shade. I always thought the worst thing about hanging baskets was that they're a bit naff. <laughs> the dangers of the garden pale into insignificance compared with the kitchen. Right. I've spilled some water. <laughs> uh, I was transferring um, a saucepan from there to the sink um, and I jerked it and some was splashed on the floor. Well, you didn't you just got a cup of water and throw it on the floor? <laughs> it's like you're trying to create dangerous situations where accidents can happen. Right, there we've got a bowl of soapy water. If I go into this drawer and take out the bread knife and drop the bread knife in there, you can't see the knife in there. So, if I left that as it is now um, and my wife came home and just put a hand in there to see what's in there before tipping the water away, um, she could cut a hand on that knife. Yeah, washing up bowl full of water's dangerous. I mean, I can't see anything that's inside. Which which brings us to our tea basket. Which brings us to our TV highlights of the week. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Here, what's 
Anna Ryder Richardson been up to since changing rooms came off the air? I'm just scraping up gibbon poo. <laughs> well, I suppose it was either that or hole in the wall. <laughs> of course not. No, she's bought herself a zoo. The zoo cost the couple £1 million, but it's been closed to the public for over a year, and it's on its knees. What a bargain! <laughs> Just the sort of thing she should be putting all her changing rooms cash into at a time of a credit crunch. It was either a rundown zoo or a branch of Woolies. <laughs> Still, a zoo can be a great family day out, can't it? A life-affirming experience. With just six weeks before they open, the apprentice zoo owners confront the reality that zoos are as much about death as lifestyle. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you still sure about the project, Anna? Look at Malinas. What do you want, this or a Ferrari? <laughs> I know what I want. Yeah, but you bought a zoo. <laughs> so, I suppose it's what they call the circle of life. In the circle of life. Thank you, Anna. That's all from us here. See you next week. I wonder which of Louis's many faces will be on display next Saturday. Well, we're in for a clue next, cos it's your vote that decides who is in next week's final for The X Factor. And also tonight, another big battle. Danny McIntosh and Rod Anderton compete for the English light heavyweight title. It's The Big Fight Live, starting on ITV4 next.